Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Tom Dark channel. I am your host, Tom Dark. The internet should never be used as a tool to bully others, so if you feel as though you're being bullied, LOG OFF YOU LITTLE bitch. And today, I'm gonna be talking about women. More specifically, e-girls. Oh! The horror. Listen, all I'm saying is that the cat ears are cool, okay? They're cool. I think they're I think they're cool and based. But basically, if you spend enough time online, you know that there are a few different species of e-girl and a few different branches of the creature, right? You got the cat girls, you got the ones that listen to Corpse Husband, you have the dried up 30 year old women who are begging for money on Twitch to their audience while slowly coming to the realization that they have nothing in life. Five dollars a month! Well, I gotta break it to you. Maybe no one cares about you. Maybe you have nothing and deserve nothing. But today, instead of doing anything cringe or embracing stereotypes, as fun as that is sometimes, today I will instead be gazing deep into the mind of the e-girl. I will be talking about one of the most successful in the crowd right now, Amaranth. <laughs> People often ask me, define based. What does based mean to you, Tom Dark? Well, frankly, this is clearly the most based and red-pilled thing available for free online. You ask me about this, this trad lifestyle, you ask me about this red pill, I say, here you go, Normie, this is all you need to get it, okay? So Amaranth is really popular. She has a lot of followers on all platforms. She makes a ridiculous amount of money, like north of six figures each month. She is absolutely rolling in cash and horse masks and money to purchase new inflatable hot tubs. She recently bought her assistant a brand new Subaru Crosstrek. Very nice choice, by the way. She really made the right investment there with that automobile purchase. She also recently acquired a new gas station, which is a very interesting investment if you ask me. Not something I saw coming from her or any of these Twitch females, to be honest but hey, good for her, I guess. Funnily enough, on her personal Twitter account, she recently did a little thread where she broke down the cost of buying the gas station and why she did it. It's actually a, a pretty good read, so I'm gonna read it now. Okay, okay, here's why I bought a gas station. A Circle K, no less. It cost me $4 million, or negative $110,000, depending on how you look at it. Yes, that's a negative sign. I was paid $110,000 and got a gas station free. And I, or you, can do it again and again and again. This is not a one-of-a-kind thing or a special sweetheart deal. Let's start. We have a newly built gas station in a major metropolitan area. 100,000 cars pass by daily, listed for $4 million. I invest $1 million and borrow the rest $3 million. Easy so far, right? Now, since we bought the gas station and in accordance with applicable laws, and once structured correctly, I will take an accelerated depreciation charge of approximately 3 mil, multiplied by 0.37, my marginal tax rate, which equals $1,110,000. So, for 2021, I will owe $1,110,000 less in income taxes. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Needless to say, you know, I know that the whole meme is that the e are dumb and, you know, she's just a, a, a bimbo, but I'm gonna be honest, this was a great thread, and to me, this not only shows that she's a relatively intelligent human being, but is also very business savvy, spends a lot of her time thinking about Twitch and all of this, um, and, and, and she really sees this as a purely financial thing rather than just her shaking her ass on stream for money or whatever, all right? Talk about the Sigma grind set, she is certainly on it. Although, I mean, let's be real, she probably, uh, she probably likes shaking her ass too, if I had to guess. Well, seeing as I am a content creator, I like to pay attention to whoever I think is the most interesting, and time and time again, I would hear stuff like this from Amaranth. Recently, Ludwig said that she was the hardest working woman on Twitch, and so eventually I was like, all right, I don't really want to watch her videos, to be honest, they're not for me. Uh, you know, I've tried watching her content, I've checked it out time and time again, and, uh, <laughs> it really does not get me going. To be honest, I'm much more interested in the cat girl ASMR offerings on YouTube, but I was like, okay, how can I find out a little more about the inner workings of the Amaranth brain? What is going on inside that noggin? What is there? So I found this interview that she did with thegamer.com, clearly a reputable source. Video game. It's titled, Amaranth Interview. 
I just work harder, full stop. So that is the hook, right, to get people in there. The idea that she is a girl boss and a savage and that she is working harder than everyone else. And I'm gonna go through some of this interview and see what the interesting pieces of information are here. For the guys out there looking to be on their own financial grind set, maybe this will help you out a little bit with thinking about that. For any aspiring milky saleswoman in the audience, all right, this is definitely the video for you. So uh, yeah, let's see what she had to say. If you listen to a certain segment of their fan base, streamers have it pretty easy on the whole. Streaming, after all, should not be considered real work. While some have embraced this idea, the majority of streamers would be quick to point out just how much goes into what they do. Streamers have a tough job, and for female streamers, it's even tougher. Now, this is something I would probably uh, push back on a bit. I know she didn't say this, but yes, it is true streaming and YouTube can have some tougher aspects to it, right? There can be kind of hard parts to it. If you put in a lot of effort, it can be it, it can be hard. But in general, I think for most people, it's a relatively easy uh, and, and really stress-free job. For someone like her, who, as we will read, has employees, there's a lot more that goes into it because of the responsibility of running a business, which supports a bunch of people. But I personally don't want this to get too out of hand and, and carried away because in general, streaming in YouTube is a much easier job than anything else out there. It just is. That being said, she in particular does work some insane hours that I don't think most people realize. In fact, for the last five years, she has been live for an average of 14.4 hours each and every day, which is fucking nuts. Amaranth, though, has managed to make it all the way to the top. To hear her explain it, though, the reason is simple. I work harder, full stop, Amaranth says. I delegate and have a team that I've painstakingly trained and educated. They educate new hires and the culture I set. We all work long and hard, and I make sure incentives are aligned. At the top end, some of my employees earn six-figure incomes. In Texas, this is very meaningful. I have uncapped upside profit shares to help align goals. Hearing her talk about Twitch in this way is interesting to me as someone who doesn't know a ton of streamers, um, and also, frankly, doesn't know a ton about business or anything like that, right? I find it interesting that she talks about it from a very, like, data-driven perspective. Um, like, she isn't coming at this like, oh, it's just entertainment, I dress up and whatever, people get off to me. She sees it as, like, a bunch of calculated moves to get the most viewership possible and get the most people watching possible, right? I personally did not realize that there was that much going into all of this. I'm curious if many other streamers have the same type of thing going on or if their business models and strategies are, are, are a lot more simple. I would predict Tyler1 isn't spending his time with like a bunch of employees carefully strategizing the next move. I would predict even someone more professional in that way, like maybe Ludwig does not have like a million employees, but uh, for someone like her who, who like, you know, I guess she, she streams on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, she does OnlyFans, I believe she owns like a pool toy company now. Now she has a gas station. I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff going on with her. It makes sense for her to have a bunch of people helping her out on all of it. Twitch is male dominated and the zeitgeist is still very much male culture, she says. It is seen as simping to watch female content creators. If Twitch becomes more mainstream, this may change. We can only hope. Both men and women deserve the same shot and not to have viewer bases shamed for their choice with reference to viewing preference. Now, this is something I want to comment on a little bit because, I mean, I want to say this in the nice way possible, all right, because I could be really mean here, but realistically, come on, I'm a nice guy, I'm a reformed guy, this is the new me, and the new me does not put people down, okay, he's a nice guy, so, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna come out and say, like, come on, you cannot deny that, uh, the reason people watch you is because they get off to you, okay, I mean, just, just look at the actual content, what other appeal could there be to this? Is it like insightful commentary we're getting? Is it the, the the stunning, riveting information being dissected on stream? No, you you are an internet stripper. I mean, it's fine, you know what? If that's what you want to do, and, and that's how you want to earn your money, I don't really care, good for you. But I feel that the stigma attached to something that should kind of be accepted with the territory a bit, because at the end of the day, it is provocative in nature. Uh, it is making money off of your body, right? That's the very nature of the job. And frankly, I agree that women deserve the same shot on Twitch, right? But it certainly doesn't help the idea that women online are equal to men online when some of the most popular women out there entirely profit from wearing low-cut shirts rather than their personality or insight or skill. I don't really care either way, but like this whole meme about how 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 you shouldn't shame people publicly for their viewer preference, like, I don't know. I, I just, uh, <laughs> sometimes you can be mean to someone because of the content they like. Sometimes you can be like, this is fucking stupid content. And that person, if they really like it, should be able to accept that and like, and, and like deal with it or argue about it or just watch that stuff anyway, right? I don't really care either way, but this whole meme about like, uh, not shaming people it's just kind of, it's kind of cringe, okay? You can make fun of people for watching my low effort dumb commentary videos. You can make fun of people for watching Sniper Wolf videos, that's fine. And you can make fun of people for watching Amaranth. It's cool, it's based, and it's pilled, okay? Like, who really cares? Amaranth is typically classified as an ASMR streamer, but rather than conventional ASMR, 
Her activities include anything from licking microphones to putting on a horse head mask, a Gwen Stacy costume, and bouncing around in her bed in what became known as the fart meta. <laughs> While it's hard to have a strategy based around what the latest trend will be, Amaranth says her team is numbers oriented, and her decisions come from this information over anything else. I just try my best to make the best data-driven decision at each point in time, she says. I wish I had a unified strategy. Me and my team track every quantum of data, every key performance indicator, every dollar of revenue, every impression. While the fart meta, <laughs> the fucking fart meta, Jesus. <laughs> While the fart meta, and particularly the hot tub meta, helped raise Amaranth's profile even more, they were not without their consequences. Her participation in both saw Twitch ban her and a handful of other streamers for their content. In turn though, this can be even bigger boost for her notoriety. The one way to make sure people want to see a movie is to ban it. And Amaranth had previously used her bans to promote her presence elsewhere, be they social media platforms like TikTok or adult sites like OnlyFans. She's even been accused of getting banned on purpose, specifically to court this controversy. That apparently is not true. No one really plans it. Each ban is immensely stressful, and I never know if it'll be my last, she says. It's a fun narrative people like to push, but it's just not true. I don't want to be banned, even for a day. This is something I was thinking about the other day because, I mean, we can take her word for it here, I guess. Like, like why not? Maybe she doesn't want to be banned now, but like all of the most successful streamers right now, like XQC, like Ludwig, have been banned temporarily multiple times, and they kind of play the system in that way because they know that ultimately the bans generate a ridiculous amount of tension for them and no long-term consequences. So they will do something that gets a ton of attention, get a two-day ban so they get a little break, and when they come back, their viewership is stronger than ever because because of the weight. So I would not put it past Amaranth to do that in particular. I know she is claiming here that she doesn't plan it at all, but uh, I'm sure of the fact that she's at least a little self-aware of the idea that when she does get banned, all of the esports news talks about her, right? Every other streamer has to talk about her and be like, oh wow, she got banned, why did she get banned? Wow, that's crazy. She knows that commentary channels like mine, Optimus, you know, some ordinary gamers will probably talk about it and be like, wow, why'd she get banned? Let's talk about it. And so she's very aware of the fact that she will benefit from that in a way for sure. Not necessarily shitting on her for it. I mean, if it works, like why wouldn't she do it? That's her prerogative. But yeah, I guess I just kind of see this as uh, something that I will choose to believe her on because I don't think she has a history of lying or anything like that, but it seems a little sussy wussy to me. Some may say, I in particular would would say that. And believe it or not, this interview actually ends on something based, okay? It ends on something cool. And I have to confess to you guys something that uh, that really grinds my gears, okay? That really activates my almonds, that makes me a little upset. I hate the blind parroting of hatred for NFTs, okay? <laughs> The one thing that everyone blindly like parrots the opinions of from shit they see in like one YouTube video or one tweet is like this list of things for why they hate NFTs. I hear these same talking points over and over again anytime someone uses NFTs, makes an NFT, or even talks about an NFT, okay? There are these fucking freaks on Twitter who come out to shit all over them. And Amaranth actually talks about them here in this interview and makes some interesting points about energy use and the viability of NFTs in the modern age. I think the environmental impact concern is something of a blanket statement, starting with that position just makes people talk past one another. People need to be much better informed before they just start repeating vague talking points. Energy use isn't inherently bad. You would need to determine how that energy is produced. Certain protocols are also more efficient. Say, Solana-based projects, for instance. The energy issue debate needs to happen, but participants need to be better informed. The push towards green sources should be championed, and we should be figuring out how to scale renewable energy. It's a far better future than one where we only worry about rationing energy use. Grow the pie, not slice it into ever smaller pieces. Wow, okay, uh, based, actually. That's, that's pretty cool. That's a big brain take, I would say. She has a, a functioning brain where she's thinking critically about these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Amaranth, for being like the only person who will think about this shit. Because the hatred for NFTs is so bad, it's so fucking cringy to me, okay? When you see these people talking about this shit on Twitter, and it's just like a mob of, of fucking monkeys being like, they made a Stan Lee NFT. They made the Etika NFT. And like, yeah, okay, those are bad, but it's not like NFT is a company or a person. These are individuals making NFTs for sale, which are bad on an individual level. You cannot generalize an entire technology based off of one bad use of it. I'm so- I- sorry, I- Honestly, overall, what this interview has shown me is that deep inside the Amaranth brain, uh, I, I think there is a lot stewing, okay? She probably has a lot more interesting shit to spew on a daily basis. I thought this article was pretty good, so thanks to the gamer for putting this out. Be sure the next time you guys publish something to include the gamer word somewhere in there, alright? I will be keeping my eye out, and the Tom Dark Nation will be on standby for whenever you release the gamer word. I greatly look forward to it. But anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say about this article, about NFTs, about the gamer, 
and the word. If you guys liked the video, then be sure to leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. And as I said, post your thoughts down in the comment section below. It's always good to hear what you, uh, you cool people who aren't freaks of nature have to say. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.